All right, so you're traveling and you only wanna bring a single shoe, maybe two shoes with you to wear casually, but then also train in. What are you bringing? So I have six shoes up here that I've been really loving for my travels. I have been traveling a lot lately and I tend to travel really light as in like, I will literally just bring a bigger backpack with me on week long trips. And then I'll try to bring one or two pairs of shoes for all of my needs. And I do very selective when doing so. So I'm gonna talk about six of my most recent favorite pairs. Now, don't get me wrong. There are a lot of shoes that were gonna fit into this category. So maybe I'll do an update of this video like bi-annually, but all that to say, let's dive into the first shoe in the first category of barefoot shoes. All right, so the first shoe that I wanna cover that I've been really enjoying lately is the Belinka Velocity. So this shoe is gonna be best for anybody that wants a shoe that they can kind of dress up, wear more casually, but then also do some lifting and cross training in. This can be a great option too for anybody in slightly colder climates. The upper is a little bit heavier in this model, not so heavy to where it's like massively unbreathable, but it's gonna give you a bit more warmth than the next model I'm gonna discuss. Now, now, three things to like with the Belinka Velocity. Number one, it works really well for lifting. So we have a nice flat sole in the shoe and the stack height is very low. So if you want a lot of ground feel with your barefoot shoes and you like a flatter feeling shoe that doesn't have kind of that rounded sole construction, that's where the Belinka Velocity can excel from a training context. The second thing to like with the shoe is its appearance. Now, I didn't actually love this blue outline on the shoe when I first got them, but I will say this has been the most commented on barefoot shoe I have ever worn. As in, when I go to the gym, everybody always asks, what shoe is that that is sweet? So maybe I just have really bad style, but I also like some of the other colorways. And honestly, the blue has grown on me. And I find that it is actually pretty easy to wear with different outfits. Now, would I dress this up in a super formal setting? Not necessarily, but when it comes to more general settings, this shoe does a pretty good job regarding its appearance. The third thing to like with this model Model is the width of the forefoot and midfoot here. So this is gonna be a great option to look into if you have an exceptionally wide foot. So if you find some of the barefoot shoes out there for like zero shoes and whatnot feel a little bit narrow for you, I think this can actually be a better option to give you a bit more room. And the upper volume in this shoe is decent for what it's worth. So you should have enough room in this model's toe box to allow your toes to display and your feet to do their things. Now, two cons that come along with the shoe. Number one, it's not going to be the best for running if that's something you want out of your barefoot shoe. It can feel a little bit clunky for that in my opinion. You can run in them, don't get me wrong, but I think if you are gonna be doing a lot of running focused workouts, you could probably find a barefoot shoe that's a bit more optimized for that, like the HFS2, the Zelen, or even some of the Vivo barefoot shoes. The second kind I have with the shoe, and it's very specific, it's more so for those folks who have voluminous feet or higher insteps, the tongue here can rub when you're breaking this shoe in. Once this mesh breaks in though, it does get a bit more comfortable, but expect a little bit of rub here if you do have that type of foot anatomy. Now pro tip, just wear longer socks and that should help mitigate it entirely. And you can also wear them a little bit looser and that should also help. Now, when it comes to sizing, I would say go true to size for most folks. I wear a size 10 US, this is an EU 43 and I find them to fit pretty dang well. Even if I wear thicker socks or go barefoot, I'm not either swimming in this model or I'm not too suffocated in the shoe. So it does a good job of running true to size. So for most foot anatomies, this shoe should work true to size, but definitely check the sizing guide before you invest in this model. The next model I want to cover is the Feel Grounds Move. Now, this shoe has been interesting. It has grown on me really steadily in the sense of how comfortable it is. And so if you want that barefoot shoe for travel that has maximal breathability and a ton of comfort, that's where the shoe can excel. It can also work for some casual cross training and lifting context too. Now, three things to like with the Feel Grounds Move is number one, I really love the upper construction, just how it hugs the foot. This can be a great barefoot shoe to wear with or without socks. And if you're somebody that wants a barefoot shoe with a nice soft upper that's gonna hug your foot really well, this can be a great option to look into. It doesn't ever feel too snug or too loose either. It does a good job of walking that fine line. And what I'll do is I'll actually leave mine looser like this and just slip them on because it's very easy to do so. And they stay pretty secure when doing that. So that is a huge perk with this shoe. The second thing to like with this model is it works decently well in the gym. If you need a barefoot shoe for more casual, strength sessions, and then also some more casual cross training sessions. I'll talk about my con with the shoe for performance in my con section, but as a generalist barefoot shoe, if you're just going to do a hotel workout, or if you're just doing some strength stuff and hypertrophy work on the road, this can be a great option to explore. The third thing to like with this model is the fact that you could take the insole out and get even closer to the ground. So for me personally, if I'm lifting in the shoe, I'll take the insole out, it'll give me more ground feel. And then when I'm going back to walking around and traveling and whatnot, I will put that insole back in and it gives me a little bit of range there regarding cushion and protecting my feet. Now, two cons that come along with the Feel Grounds move. Number one, because we have this lighter weight knit upper, it does have a lot of stretch to it. So the upper security is not gonna be the best 
rest in the shoe. If you're doing a lot of aggressive cross training or doing lifts like power cleans or snatches, you might have some spillover in the shoe and you might want to steer clear of this model. The second con with this model is for training purposes, it doesn't have a tongue gusset so the tongue can slide a little bit. For daily wear, it doesn't really bother me that much because it's easy to adjust and I wear them loose so I expect it to slide a little bit. But for training, this tongue can slide when you're doing cross training and it just is a little bit of a nitpick that I have for the shoe and just one of those little annoyances that I wish I didn't have to deal with in this shoe. Now when it comes to sizing in this shoe, I went true to size in this model and it feels really good for my foot anatomy. I have an E to double E with foot and a normal arch and the shoe fits really well for my foot. Now I have had some commenters say that this model has run a little bit long so maybe if you have a narrower foot or you typically have a lot of in room at the end of your shoe's toe box, size down a half size but I think for most folks who have medium to wider to slightly wider feet, true to size will be the safe call in this model. All right, so now let's talk training shoes. So the first model I wanna cover is the Hayes Trainer. And it's, it's really tough for me to move away from this model regarding its travel abilities, but then also just being that single shoe that looks decent, but then you can also lift, cross train, do CrossFit in it, et cetera. So the Hayes Trainer, who is this gonna be best for? If you are somebody going on the road and you plan to do lifting, cross training or crossfit while you're traveling, this can be a great option to look into. Now granted, my colorway is dirty AF. Some of the colorways look really good for more casual wear, so you can definitely find that if that is one of your asks. Now, three pros that I have with the Hayes Trainer is number one, they have really good stability for lifting. So very rarely, I think, can you find a comfortable shoe regarding a training shoe that you can rock all day, but then also go lift in and it has a good amount of stability, but then enough responsiveness to keep it comfortable. This shoe, I think, does a really good job. The Kush 50 midsole gives you a nice level of stability for deadlifting or squatting heavy weights, but also being comfortable for daily wear. The second pro that I have with the Hayes Trainer is the flexibility of its sole. So I often talk about this shoe as being like almost a bridge shoe between being a more minimalist shoe, but then a more built out training shoe. So if you're somebody that likes that flexibility with your shoes, this can be a great option to look into. Like as you can see, like granted this model is very broken in, you get a lot of flex with the shoe and the sole typically breaks in pretty quick out of the gate. Granted the upper does take a little bit longer and I'll talk about that in my cons, but from a sole flexibility standpoint, the shoe excels. The third thing to like with this model is the jacquard knit upper and just how it feels on the foot. So if you have a foot anatomy that aligns with the shoe, it feels like a glove. And oftentimes I will talk to folks who are like, that is the most comfortable training shoe I've ever worn, or they're like, that is a total miss. There's really like no in between, I feel like with the Hayes Trainer, you're either really obsessed and you love it, or you're just so not about it. But I think if you are somebody that aligns with the fit of the shoe, which I'll talk about in my sizing section, this model is gonna feel really good for you. Now, two cons that I have with the Hayes Trainer. Number one, with the tongue gusset in this shoe, it can often feel a little bit snug for certain foot anatomies. And more specifically, if you have a higher instep or a thicker foot, you might find that this jacquard knit feels a little bit limiting at times. Generally speaking though, if you give it a couple weeks, it should break in. So if you're on that cusp of just feeling like it's a little bit too tight, but it's not unbearable, I would say give it some time. Now granted, if it feels like it's completely suffocating your feet, I would say just return them and go with a different option that'll align with your feet a little bit better. The second con that I have with this shoe is the outsole tread can start to fade if you're wearing them a lot outdoors on concrete. So with this model, I've had it a little bit over a year now. And as you can see, my outsole tread is starting to fade. And sometimes too, what you can get is in certain models, sometimes the mid foot can break here too with excessive walking. That's happened in one of my colorways, but then in three of my colorways, it hasn't happened. So it's kind of variable as well from that context. But the outsole tread fading is something that is pretty stereotypical with this shoe after enough duration of wear. Now sizing with this shoe, I would say most athletes and lifters should be safe going true to size in this model. So I have a double E with foot and even if I'm wearing thicker socks, this shoe feels really comfortable. I would say you might be able to get away with this shoe even if you have a three E with, but if you have wider feet than that, steer clear of the shoe. Also, if you have a very high instep or thick feet, you might wanna steer clear of this model as well because I'm not convinced you're gonna have enough upper volume in this shoe to make them comfortable. The second model I wanna cover, and this is just an OG shoe that I wear all of the time, and I just actually got another new colorway because I've loved them so much, and I gave my other old colorway to my old little brother, but this is the Vans Ultra Range XO, and I have reviewed these on the channel. It's been a while though, but this shoe is stellar for being an all-in-one style of shoe for travel, training, and then also riding 
rocking casually. And so if you want a shoe for doing all of those and you want a shoe that has a bit more cushion through the midsole, which it has a bit more of a plushness of a feel compared to the Haze Trainer, that's where this shoe can excel. Now, three pros that I have with this shoe. Number one, the comfort of the shoe is awesome. So you have the Ultra Cush midsole in this shoe. It gives you a nice level of plushness and it breaks in really fast. It's very flexible and lightweight. And if you like a more plusher ride with your training shoe for walking through, let's say airports and standing all day, but then also training and whatnot, this can be a great option to look into. The second pro that comes along with the shoe is its appearance. So this model has a lot of awesome colorways. It's easy to dress up. And honestly, like Vans is just a cool brand in my opinion. And if you resonate with Vans, I feel like it's very difficult not to find a colorway that you like in this shoe. The third thing I like with the shoe is its performance in the gym. So generally speaking, when we think of Vans, we don't often go to versatile sessions or cross training sessions. But if you want that Vans that can do that, but then also be decent for lifting, that's where the Ultra Range XO can excel. It works pretty well for some casual CrossFit, some cross training sessions, but then you could also lift in the shoe. Now granted, like I wouldn't go max out my deadlift in this model, but you can lift like 405 pounds relatively easily in this shoe. And you're not gonna have stability issues that are super glaring. So all that to say, this can be a really good all-in-one trainer. Now, when I say CrossFit, please note that if you do rope climbs in this shoe, you can burn through this mid but for most wads, this model can work pretty well. Now, two cons that come along with the Ultra Range XO. Number one, the toe box construction could be a little bit better. And I have talked about this in my last review, which was actually posted like two and a half years ago. So Vans, please, please just update this. But we have a synthetic overlay around the toe box. What ends up happening is the creasing can be interesting and you can start to have some durability issues here where this mesh or this lighter material meets this TPU. It can start to pull away and split in certain colorways and whatnot. Some folks have had that issue come up fast than others. If it happens really quick on you, reach out to Vans and hopefully they'll replace your model. The second con that I have with this shoe is its width. I wish they would offer a wide option in this shoe. We have a pretty aggressive taper here and the TPU around the toe box gives it a snugger feel than I think it should and it has a lower toe box volume. So if you have a wider foot or you need more volume in your forefoot upper, pass on this model. When it comes to sizing, true to size will be the call for most individuals. If you have a 2E width foot or wider, go up a half size. That'll give you a bit more room, but for 3E, 4E width, pass on the shoe entirely because I don't think you'll have enough room in this model's toe box. All right, so now let's talk about some running shoes. Now this first pick is a little bit controversial because it's not a straight up running shoe. If you want a straight up running shoe, the next model will be your better bet. But the Innovate F-Fly is making it into this list because it is a very all-in-one style shoe. This is one of my go-to shoes for hybrid workouts. This might not be your model for running super long distances on vacation, but if you have to tackle a 5K but then go lift, that's where the shoe can excel. Now three pros that come along with this shoe. Number one, the PowerFlow Pro midsole in this shoe, I think does a good job at walking that fine line of giving you enough stability for lifting. For example, I have deadlifted 425 pounds for reps in this shoe, but giving you enough pop and responsiveness for running and different plyometrics. Now the shoe will feel a bit more minimalist. So if you're used to super cushy running shoes, definitely keep that in mind. But all that to say, I do think this is one of those shoes that has that midsole that does really well in both lanes of both short runs and then lifting. The second thing to like with the shoe is its flexibility and and it's lightweight upper construction. So this model breaks in really fast, has a ton of flexibility, has kind of a more minimalist vibe to it, and the upper breathes really well. So we have this mesh upper with a lot of ventilation through the forefoot and midfoot. It's definitely a lighter upper. So you can experience spillover at times if you have exceptionally wide feet and you're doing like side to side work. But for the most part, I think this upper does a really good job at locking your foot down while also breathing really well. The third thing to like with the shoe is that it has a purposely made wider toe box. So if you're somebody who wants a bit more room in their toe box for toe splay in your running slash training shoes, this can be a great option to look into. Now do note, it does have a narrower midfoot here, so flat feet might find that this shoe is a little bit too snug still, but if you're like me and you have a slightly wider forefoot and a normal arch, this shoe will feel really good for your needs. Now two cons that I have with this shoe. Number one, it's gonna have a more minimalist feel, and if you need a more cush running shoe or you plan to do longer distance runs or you're not used to more minimalist shoes for runs, that's where the shoe can start to fall short. And then number two, despite having a wider forefoot, if you have a flat foot, you might wanna steer clear of the shoe just because we have a taper here, and for exceptionally wide feet. I have had some community members talk about spilling over in the shoe just because the upper isn't rigid enough. Now, when it comes to sizing, most individuals should be safe going true to size in this shoe. I would say if you have exceptionally wide feet, still give this shoe a try and see if it can work for your foot anatomy. Definitely go through Amazon or Innovate though so you can easily return and swap them out if they don't work, but true to size should be the right call for most individuals. The next shoe I wanna cover and the final shoe in this video is the Mount to Coast S1. So, 
This has been a really stellar running shoe, and the reason I'm including it in this list is because if you are somebody after a running shoe that you can wear for long, mid, or short range distances, but then also wear in the gym and do some lighter strength work and some cross training, this can be a decent option to look into. Also, the toe spring and heel beveling isn't so aggressive that you can't do those ladder activities in, hence why I'm including this shoe. It's kind of similar to the Innovate F-Fly, but it's a bit more running bias as opposed to really walking that hybrid line that the F-Fly does. Now, three pros that I have with the S1 is number one, the midsole construction. So the light cell midsole in this shoe, it gives you a lot of pop. And so if you're somebody who is doing slower runs or fast paced runs, this is one of those midsoles, I think, in a running shoe that can walk really well in both of those worlds. It feels really comfortable if I'm doing like a very slow, like nine to 10 minute pace, or it feels very poppy and responsive and lively if I'm doing seven to eight-ish minute paces. So if you're somebody that wants that midsole that can do both, this can be a great option to look into. The second thing to like with this shoe is the upper construction and how it locks the foot down. So we have a jacquard mesh upper in this shoe, which I also think gives it a nice casual look. We also have TPU overlays around the forefoot and then back here in the heel. So if you want an upper construction that locks your foot down really well for different ranges of running, but then also you can wear looser and have it still be decently secure, this model can be a great option to look into. And the third thing to like with this shoe is the outsole construction and that it does a decent job, I think, with durability. So I have beat the heck out of these shoes and they're still holding up pretty well. You have enough rubber on this shoe, I think, to protect the brakes where the foam is exposed in this midsole. So if you want that shoe for walking around all day and then training in, this can be a great bet to look into. Now, two cons that I have with the shoe. Number one, it's not the widest fitting shoe on the market. So if you need a running shoe that has an exceptionally wide toe box, this might not be your best bet. And then number two, this isn't really a knock against the shoe's performance, but it definitely has a higher drop sitting at 10 millimeters. So if you're used to flatter shoes or you want a running shoe, shoe that has a flatter or lower drop, this might not be your best bet. Again, not really a con against this shoe outright, but it's definitely gonna be a con for specific asks and needs. Now, when it comes to sizing in this model, most folks should be safe going true to size in this shoe. I have a double E with foot and this model fits me pretty true. Granted, I can feel this TPU at times if I wear thicker socks. So that said, if you have a 3E width foot or wider, I would say probably pass on this shoe because I'm not convinced you'll have enough width up here in the toe box.